known as the PSP7 Spirit Box. I wanted to go there and get a really good idea of how this thing worked. Not just a general sense of how it worked, but how does it work in the capacity of an ITC device in a paranormal investigation? With that being said, the three purposes of this study on the PSP7 spirit box are one, to establish trends and responses, two, to establish legitimacy of responses, and three, what does my EMF EFRF detector pick up when positioned adjacent to the SP7 spirit box? In this portion of the study, I'll be establishing trends and responses. One of the main reasons I'm doing this is because many times during investigations we'll be running a ghost box session. Ghost box is what I like to call a spirit box. And we'll get numerous responses, very strong, very clear responses. Some of them rather intelligent. And suddenly things just die off. Now, depending on the moment and the energy of the group, we either continue to go and the responses kick back up, or we misinterpret it as a the spirit just being turned off, not wanting to speak anymore. Um, so here, I just want to let the ghost box run. And what I'll do is I'll let it run a couple of times through the entire radio frequency spectrum. And then I'm going to pretty much jot down the active response times. Active response times being when we're getting responses. And the inactive times when things just seem to die off. And then I'll show you here what I found out. Seventy-nine, we went blank. Eighties, nineties, we're starting back up. Here's the big kicker about the inactive and active ranges that the ghost box experiences. They match up nearly exactly with the Cincinnati radio stations. So it's pretty simple to me. You're just hearing Cincinnati radio stations and they're just scanning through them at a very, very quick rate. So pay attention to the voices you get. C, are you hearing just radio stations? You you can hear. You can hear tunes. And what are they talking about? Then listen to your responses. So just take a quick look at this. So this next section is me trying to figure out the legitimacy of the responses. As you saw in the other section that we seem to have a active response range where radio stations are coming 
and from about 89 FM to about 106 FM. And then when we get into 107, but predominantly low to middle 70s, up to about 88 to 89 FM, we have inactive periods. During those active periods, we get responses. During those inactive periods, not so much. So here, I've established a set of three questions. And in these three questions, I varied them in complexity. And the way I varied these questions were, is anyone here? Which is basically a yes or no response, typically. How old are you? Here, I'm looking for an exact number. I'm looking for them to say a number. Not to give me any vague answers, just very straight responses. And then what is your name is the last question I'll ask because it's more involved. There's more syllables that need to happen. You know, I need to hear a name. A name could also identify, you know, gender and things like that. So as I ask these questions, you'll hear responses depending on if they're in the active or inactive inactive responses you got to sort of filter out <laughs> but you'll hear the responses and pay very close attention imagine you're in an investigation which ones sound like responses which ones sound like hey damn they answered that question and then you'll see at the end of it I bring everything back home put it into audacity review and if they don't follow one of my three criterias which is context to question is it a direct answer does it relate to the question clarity how well can I hear it does it sound like what it's saying and three intelligence is the response in context is the response related directly to the question if they don't follow those three guidelines I don't have an intelligent response so judging what I get there as legitimate ITC communication, paranormal communication, I need those three things. I need two out of three. I need something. And what I do is I take this video home because I have the recorder running and I listen to it all and I decide were these responses to my questions legitimate. And I let you know out of that whole session how many did I get. Okay. Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? We'll wait till 80 now? Or 70s? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name?
So something I wanted to show you real quick when you're at home and after you've done your ghost box sessions is you'll see the inactive spectrums here and the active spectrums. You'll see where the chat chatter really starts. Now, in that active channel, you'll get responses, but I want to make a very important note. That inactive channel has to be noise filtered, not a heavy noise filter. Enough that when you clean it up, you can it'll start to look like a condensed, smaller, non-amplified version of the active channel. This is important because in there, you will find some very legitimate responses to your questions. Very intelligent. So when you do these, go back, edit those, do a light noise reduction, do some filtering of your, uh, of your audio, and you will find voices in there. The last thing I'll go over is basically something you've probably, see, probably seen already. The EMF, RF, EF meter is directly next to the ghost box. I've made note of it in some of the videos, but you can see that there's some kind of trend there. And I want to see what it's picking up. Now, since you've already seen it, I'll go in, I'll explain it a little. I'll explain the summary a little and what my results were. <laughs> Basically, an EMF field is being emitted when the radio hits the active response range. Between 88, 89 FM, and 106, 105 FM, we have a circulating EMF field that goes from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.5 up to 4.5 or 5. And then it falls back down. It's like a waveform pattern. And it only happens during these active ranges. That's interesting to me because I would have never thought that. <laughs> from a paranormal investigation standpoint, don't put your RF EMF meters near your ghost box you might get false positives but also from a parapsychology standpoint there is some belief that emf fields help power paranormal activity so what you basically have is that during these active periods of radio frequency your ghost box is emitting a small emf field which if you believe it helps them communicate with you so what I'll do is you'll really get to see this portion. Um, I want you to sort of be aware that that is occurring so you can look at it. I've made it obvious for you. And just take a look. It's very interesting. Now in a quick summary conclusion, I, I do think it's important that I let you know I do think the PSB7 spirit box is a good paranormal tool. But just like any paranormal tool you use, you have to be responsible with it and that responsibility doesn't lie in the spiritual part and protecting yourself and things like that. The responsibility is solely in this case put into having a healthy level of skepticism about how these paranormal tools operate with spirit box ghost box you got to consider that a large portion of it is just not something you could really make much out of but when this thing hits I mean it hits so with all that being said yes go ahead use these but do not jump at every shadow you see or every noise you hear out of here. 
take a second, say, hey, let's not run on that yet. Let's continue the session. If you have a, the proper recorder, I won't say proper, but if you have a specific kind of recorder, you have a T mark button. And no matter if your recording is 30 minutes long, you hit that T mark button, you go right back to that spot. Take a second, have somebody review it, listen to it, see what this thing is really giving you. All right. So if you're interested, this next part will be the entire test. I think I've did very little cuts on it. Um, my battery does die on my, my, uh, video camcorder at one point, but everything's here for you to see. Take a listen. Hey, it's Jonathan with Epoch Paranormal. I really appreciate you watching these videos. If you'd like to support my channel further, please go down and hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks. I think I'm going to do the test here. I'm going to do some ghost box stuff here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be running a ghost box session. So, what I want to see is one, I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to let the system run and scan through the channels. And what I'm looking for is to see when the responses come through. Responses similar to like what we would consider an answer. Just abnormal radio response. Things that we typically think are voices. So inside of that, I'm going to have a digital recorder running. The, the SB7 will be running. And then over here you have the uh, the Triway EMF RF uh, EF meter and right now what you're seeing there is that it's set to radio frequency so I want to see what radio frequencies are picked up from this thing at the same time I do want to keep some track of EMF if there was EMF here it'd be here now so that's going to be our baseline at 0.0 .0. it's been that way for about the last five minutes same with EF RF is sitting at that point zero zero one so that's all we need so we're going to set the recorder up Now this recorder is a linear PCM recorder, it's Sony. Um, it does have noise cut. Those things are turned off. I don't play with noise cut. And so what it's just gonna do is it's just gonna run. This first trial is just gonna be me keeping track of when the voices occur, okay? So we're running here. The sweep rate's gonna be the same. Sweep forward. Let's see. I want sweep rate at 150 on each one. There will be no antenna. We're starting at, we'll start monitoring at uh, 95.0. Start monitoring at 105. 79, we went blank.
do one more pass through from 90 or 105. Additional pass from 105 up. So what I'm seeing from those two from those two runs is that between 88.0 and this is FM by the way between 88.0 FM and 107 FM we have a pretty we have a lot of radio static a lot of voices coming through uh, once we leave 107 and we start back around 77 Point zero to 90 those stations are dead <laughs> there's very little of any radio static or communication going on so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a series of three questions I'll ask is anyone here what the hell was that Sounds like when. Anyway, I'll ask a series of three questions. One is, what is your name? Is anyone here? And then how old are you? Uh, what I'll do is I'll switch them up. I won't switch them up. I'll say, is anyone here? That's a simple yes or no. How old are you is a number. And what is your name is going to be a more evolved question. And I'll ask that over. What I'll do is I'll ask it during that dead time, which occurs between 77 to 90, and then I'll ask it during the active time, 88 to 107. 
Okay, so same as before, I'm not going to use an antenna. I'm just not using it right now. I don't want the antenna. I'll do another example to see if it changes. Okay. Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? We'll wait till 80 now? Or 70s? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? We'll wait till 90s. Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Last round. Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? One more round. Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How, how old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anyone here? How old are you? What is your name? Stop that. <laughs> so the things I noticed during that is that a lot of the questions were answered inside of that active spectrum between 90 and, excuse me, between 88 and 107 FM. When I asked questions between 77 and 90, there was little to no response at all. I'll put those together to let you hear what answers were given during each spectrum. Um, something else I want to note is that if you were asking questions during this time and you didn't know the difference between the dead spectrum or the dead radio frequencies and the live radio frequencies, would you misinterpret this for a lack of communication? Would you interpret it as legitimate communication? So what I'm trying to really see here is the legitimacy of the SB7 and how much, it is, how much of it is coincident. <laughs> so I'll admit, I'm going to go back and review because some of those responses I got during that active spectrum sounded like intelligent responses. Now what I'm not going to do or what I try to do during my investigations is to take that response and run with it. And for, so for example, if you're asking what is your name or how old are you 
or what sex are you? And you get a response that you interpret as saying, you know, Herbert, uh, 27, male. And you, you base the rest of your investigation off of this 27-year-old male named Herbert only to get home and to review your ghost box responses and find out Herbert wasn't said. It was something completely different. The age 27 wasn't said. It was actually a word. Or not a number, but a word. Or that he didn't say male, he actually said female. <laughs> so here you go running off on a tangent based off of just evidence that is just circumstantial and not properly reviewed. Now, these recorders come with things called T-mark buttons. Use them. And before you go out and you say these ghost box responses are what we heard, review it with headphones and really get a good idea. And, and the same thing sort of needs to be said about that this method that people seem to use where they have one individual wearing headphones and listen to ghost box responses. To review that response in that moment isn't something that you can do with just certainty. It's the same as having a group listen to the ghost box and saying, oh, this is what we all heard. It's not getting rid, it's not getting rid of the possibility of you misinterpreting what the ghost box says. And the only way to really get a good idea is to sit and review real quick what you were hearing. Listen to it multiple times through the T-mark button where you can go back at any length of recording and go to that point and review and review. So the next thing I want to do is we're going to run through the whole system and figure out what the active spots are with the antenna up. And then we'll do the same thing we just did, okay? For this test today, we're keeping it on uh, we're keeping it on FM. I ain't got time to be doing all that, so Ready? Same sweep rate. my battery died on me 
Uh, ever, all my batteries are going out on me. So we'll make this quick. Uh, what you saw was the same same range as with the without the antenna. Uh, 77 to our 70s to about 88, 90, and then once you hit 90 to 107, you had activity. So we'll do this with the antenna. We'll ask the same set of questions, and I'll end the experiment for today. Is anybody here? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? So you may be seeing a spike on the RF because I have my phone actively out now. You can see more if I put it up to it. So maybe it's not the phone. Maybe we are getting some uh, radio frequency interference. That wasn't there before, so I have to double check to make sure the antenna isn't causing that. So, is anybody here? What is your name? How old are you? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? All right, last time through. Because all my batteries are dying. You see that RF spike right there? That's pretty hefty. Yeah. Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Is anybody here? How old are you? What is your name? Alright, that's the last time through. So, 
I did notice, even from the last session, I didn't mention this, there have been EMF spikes. Uh, I don't know where those are coming from. I thought the RF spikes were maybe coming from my phone being on, but when, when they're going up into the 40s like that, no, nah, I, I haven't seen that from my phone, especially at this distance. Uh, I don't know if that may have been caused by the antenna being new. I'll have to check the video to see why the antenna was down that we get any RF spikes from what I remember. That's a hard no. Uh, what I want to review here with the digital recorder is one during the non-dominant times when not you know between 77 FM to about 88. I think it even lower, even around 107 it died down. And then during the active times between 88 FM and to about 106.5. 106 I believe you know what are the quality of responses during that active time did I receive the same responses were there any patterns in the things that did come through to show that the radio interference was there um, did I get intelligent responses because I really think what we're dealing with with 85 to 80 you know 80 to 85 percent of ghost box responses is we're just caught up in the moment it's all coincidental and we're getting things in that actually when you review them are nothing they're just nothing but when you when you actively participate on the spot you hear a quality response and you sort of go nuts um something i do think that we should do with ghost box sessions and this is something I'll start to incorporate in my own practices is that when we get into a site we need to take the time to actually sit down and do that sweep analysis like I did so you know after the sweep analysis I was able to come to the conclusion that between 88 FM and 106.5 FM I'm getting a bunch of responses and I'm getting radio static and between 107 and 88 FM I'm not getting very many responses at all so what I want to do is when I go to a site I need to sit down at that site say okay everybody these are your active channels these are your non-active channels your ghost box responses will predominantly come through during these channels but please make it an emphasis to look for these dead channel responses because they may be more legitimate than these active channel responses and it's sort of just like a due diligence with ghost box work or SB7 work that you be able to sort of stop in that moment and say okay that was a very solid response let's go back and review so that was the point of this little first test with the SB7. I did do it right here because I felt pretty comfortable. It felt welcoming to sit there and to sort of relax with this person. Uh, let's get some information just in case their name comes through. And I'm not doing this with any disrespect. I'm not here saying, hey, give me a sign. Do this, do that. I don't, that's not what I'm here for. Uh, the cool part about these cemeteries is you have a lot of things that are in transition. You know, most of the things here, they don't have that ethereal life force, ethereal life force anymore. They're not hanging out. They're not hanging out like that. You know they've moved on they're you know they're 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 spirit beings they're they've reincarnated they've gone somewhere else but there are some things around here that are probably still hanging out to be honest you got you got cemeteries you have people that pass away their bodies going through a decomposition the physical body is probably still powering portions of the soul um and they, and they might hang out here or they may have passed over the ones that are hanging out here there's probably some things in these cemeteries I hate to say it, but there's probably some things in these cemeteries that feed off of that. That sort of come trying to get that leftover energy and finding a way to do something with it. And they probably feed off of us too. If they're here. I mean, if, if those kind of things are here. Um, anyway. Ghost Box. SB7. 
Uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll get this out because I think it's pretty important. If I get more time or if my camera, my phone battery holds up, I'll try and do another session.